So let's talk about the Wyatt 6 because finally we had a big development here where Bo Dallas came out. Uh, we had Chad Gable finally uh, clearly aligning with the, what they call the Creed Brothers? The one who likes whoa. Bailey and uh, the other guy, <laughs> they come whoa, out there. Whoa, whoa, chill. <laughs> chill. Like they beat up Bo Dallas out of nowhere and he, Bo Dallas just took it. And he didn't even fight back, he just smiled. And uh, then the Wyatt Six came down to the ring very slowly while, you know, like their, I guess, leader is pretty much being beefed to a uh, beaten to death. Uh, I don't know. It, it, to me, it was. It was not a good segment. Overall, I have some negative thoughts about this whole Y6 angle, but I want to hear what you think first, Kenny, about this angle and then Y6 in general so far. Well, Kato, as I always say, I like the dark characters. I love The Undertaker, best of all time. I loved Kane. I love Malachi Black, even Midian and Viscera. All of the evil guys, I love them. Mm. Bray Wyatt, even. But I mean... I was very excited for the Y6 whenever they did that first angle where everybody was shot in the head in the back and everybody was laid out. And I just feel like after that, they've kind of cooled down a lot. I love Bray Wyatt, uh, Bo Dallas' first sit-down uh, promo when yeah. he addressed the situation what happened with Bray Wyatt. Eric Rowan did the same thing tonight, and I thought it was good. But I think they really hurt him tonight because, for one, he doesn't really look imposing like a Bray Wyatt did. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he could have afforded to get beat up like this. Because he just felt like the nerd kid in school that every all of the bullies were beating up. And then they just walked away and left him on the ground. Now, he was out there laughing and stuff like, bro, you, you can laugh all you want. We know this hurts because one of those guys kicked him in the stomach pretty hard. And then to end the segment, you know, the Y6 comes out. But they're coming down slowly after he already was beat up for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Now, you have Nikki Cross with the with the lantern. She put it in front of him and he like kind of act like he was drawn to it. Like they were looking at something that was in the land. And I think that's supposed to be like representing uh, Bray Wyatt, I guess. So mm -hmm. it looks like there's some story going on. Of course, they are going to explain it. You got to enjoy the ride. But how long is the ride? You know, the roller coaster is only fun yeah. for so long. How, how many weeks ago did this thing begin? It feels like oh. it was like three months ago at this point and we haven't yeah. gotten anywhere. So I need something at this point. I, I think they tried agree. to give us something here tonight, but it wasn't for me. Yeah. Brian? I did mention a couple weeks ago that I felt like I was losing a little bit of interest, uh, interest and I don't think it's more on the characters. I think it's because of how slow um, it's it's been. Like, every week she comes out and she delivers one of these uh, boxes mm, that turns into a video that's being shown on screen later throughout the show, which is cool. It's fine, but you need more than that. And I get it. You want to roll this out slowly, but... How much more slowly do you want to roll this out? I mean, it took three months of QR codes for us to finally right. uh, yeah. get these people on TV. So at this point, it's like, all right, you got us. It's it's goal time. And I feel like they have uh, been a lot slower with the booking. And it's a Triple H thing, bro. This brother loves long-term booking. And trust me, I love it too. I, I love being able to look back and be like, hey, oh, this happened. This connects to that. But there's everything doesn't need long-term booking and i think that triple H just needs to get you know the difference of, of what needs it and whatnot i think we need a a, a healthy balance because yeah, at the right. end of the day man like we all have attention spans and we can only be interested in something for so long before we may lose interest on that story so personally i think that the story still has potential but i am losing interest by the week no, I agree. That's that's the point I was going to make as well. I I like Bo Dallas. I like every single character. I like Chad Gable there. I like all the wrestlers in the ring. The problem is they're stretching this thing out for so long now. Like, and, oh. like Chad Gable and both this storyline, like I've been waiting for something to happen to both of them ever since WrestleMania. Like this is definitely a Triple H problem in my humble opinion. Um, he also has a problem with, I guess, debuting people because Baudelaire, like we said, got his ass whooped. He looked like a joke out there. And sure, maybe they'll yeah. make it work, worth it, like worth the wait, because like I ate my words just like Brian. I was like, oh, I'm sick of these QR codes. This is so boring. But the debut yeah, yeah. completely changed my perspective. Like it was really good. Um, like back when Lynn Morgan randomly lost to Baker Lynch, she didn't get the championship. I was like, what the hell is this for? And then you know, once she got the championship at a pay-per-view, she actually won. Okay, it makes sense. Like, I don't mind waiting like uh, like you guys say, but I feel like we're waiting for something to happen in every storyline. And um, 
this one specifically, I expected more from this. I expected it to affect the entirety of the WWE, like when the Nexus debuted, for a month or two. But no, the next week or something like that, we're back to normal. Only difference we had was some just placeholder, uh, you know, extra guards there standing, but they did nothing different. They didn't change anything. Uh, or it didn't feel different at all. And like... I'd look at Braun Breaker's debut, his uh, pay-per-view match with Sami Zayn. He just straight up lost in a clean manner. This is not how you debut somebody new. Imagine Brock Lesnar just losing to Spike Dudley or, or Jeff Hardy when he first came into the WWE instead of dominating like three, four, you know, men by himself, just F5-ing everybody, doing, you know, 15 uh, power bombs. Like, this was Bo Dallas's first appearance in the wwe under this character in front of a crowd and you beat him up um i'm not that mad like for the brown breaker thing i'm actually mad like it's disappointing B you know bo dallas has a supernatural character they can pull this to any direction they want so i'm a bit more reserved with my reaction to this one but yeah we got to get the ball rolling because before we started this video brian you said something that really stuck with me bro Summer Sam is right around the corner. We're supposed to be cooking right now, and um, we only see the smoke. There's no fire. Let's just let's just put it that way. Agreed. I agree. But I will say this: uh, I do agree with y'all. I didn't think about this, but I guess it is a Triple H booking thing because we look at the Liv Morgan situation with Rhea Ripley. It was a big, long, drawn-out thing. Three months yeah. while she was injured, we see Finn Balor's taking the keys. We see them walking in and out of rooms from yeah. the back. Uh, it never really culminated. I guess it did when Rhea Ripley came out, but they never, like, Liv and Dom never really had a moment where they both no. kind of, like, lashed onto each other. Like, Dom still was pushing back the whole time. And, I mean, if Rhea Ripley was watching the show, she would have clearly seen that. But now, Rhea Ripley's back, and it feels like we're about to go through the same thing again with her and Dominic. They're just about to stretch this thing out until, I guess, SummerSlam, where or we get some type of... WrestleMania at this point. <laughs> if it happens. You're right, WrestleMania at this point. I mean, I, honestly, I think they're going to ride this storyline out the whole year. I think we're going to get Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. Yeah, because think about it, Brian. Yeah, like, I think they're going to play hot potato with the title. What are, what were they doing with Rhea Ripley before this? She was just had a match she against doing Nia much. Jax I mean, and uh, Zelina. They had nothing for her. So yeah, and that's Becky like Lynch, very realistic. Again. Bickley, yeah. But she was on the I, down. I think, I think they could ride this out, though, in my opinion. like I think it can go all the way. They just have to... I think flip flop the titles. I think Rhea's losing at yeah. SummerSlam. I think Dom Ooh. is going to try to help her, and that and 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 then it's going to help Liv instead. I think that's the way it's going to go at SummerSlam. You know what? Shock opinion. the system, man! Shock the system. Have Dominic help Liv Morgan and go off with her. Shock the think, system. Uh, would you say Liv Morgan more than that? That'd be tough. I ain't gonna lie, because I think you got to keep Dom as a heel. I think he has too much. He still has too much. Uh, Real looking good. <laughs> <laughs> now, he still he still has too much heat to turn him face, and and obviously turning him face would be putting him with Rhea at this point. So I agree. That's what and, they should do. But like, go ahead, Cunning, finish, please. I was gonna say Dominic Mysterio. He's not. Um, he he doesn't got all that experience yet. I don't oh, know yeah. if y'all noticed, but when Rhea Ripley threw the flowers and stuff at him, she gave him like a dog. I guess it was putting him in a doghouse or whatever. Like she opened the door again and gave him a dog, and he broke. Like he was laughing about it, and I'm like, oh, this dude's laughing on TV. Yeah. And then Damian Priest walked away with him. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, a lot of people compare this segment to, you know, China and, and Eddie Guerrero back in the day, which is uh, not I good in my humble opinion, because I watched those old segments and Eddie was like 10 times more charismatic. Um, Dominic yeah. needs to learn a lot more, obviously. The experience gap between the two is insane. That's not fair, though. That's not fair. Yeah, that's Eddie not Guerrero fair. Eddie Guerrero was a different monster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it was uh, on another level. Hopefully, Dominic. is not even on his level. So you're right. You're right. Hopefully, Dominic can get close to it. Maybe even go further one day. But uh, man, I don't think Dominic turning on Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania, helping Liv Min, uh, win in a decisive manner too, like saying yes, I am with Liv Morgan. No, if or but. I don't think that's shocking the system. I think this is exactly where the WWE is signaling that they're heading. If the opposite happens and Rhea Ripley wins uh, at SummerSlam, uh, I, I, that would actually surprise me because you guys made the best point about this. Dominic is just in a great spot as a heel. I don't know if you want to move him away from that. So, yeah, yeah. Triple H. Just, on, yeah. 
You say all the time. We eventually get laid out and Dominic grab Liv Morgan's head and just give her a big old nasty wet kiss over Rhea Ripley. Whoa. Come on, man. Go Brian crazy. loves it. Brother. <laughs> the last thing I want to say, man, Triple H, you say all the time that good thing, good things happen to people yeah. who wait. But get it out, get it what do you mean? Okay, hold on. Uh, all, all I was saying before we get canceled up in this business, just triple hurry up, man. Hurry up. Give us something like something. Oh, give, it to us. give it to us, Triple H. Whoa. Kiss the ring. <laughs>